Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I thank God for the opportunity to be here. Let us pray. Precious and loving Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Jehovah Lord, for all that you promised. Because you have given us your word, we want to stand on that word. Speak to us this particular evening, Lord, where we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We may be seated. We may be seated. Let me begin with an apology. I apologize for coming late. And the reason I came late, sorry, uh, there's never a good excuse for coming late, but it's because, um, let me just introduce myself is John Mark Odor. I love the Lord Jesus Christ seriously, hate the devil terribly, and I don't apologize. Praise the Lord. Um, I work with the Anglican Church of Kenya. I'm the National Director of Missions for the Anglican Church of Kenya. So from yesterday to today and tomorrow, we are, we are, I work in the Archbishop's office. We were planning for the next year. So we have a retreat, usually go and plan for all the major activities within the Anglican Church. And so we were doing that in Limuru. Now the problem was that one of the special things we want to do um, this coming year I'm sure you've been reading in the press, particularly about what is happening to our teenagers. So we are doing a major campaign next year that is called um, Wholesome Teen Tour that we are going to do with His Grace, the Archbishop. And so we had a team that came in to do the preparation. When we finished, I left. On my way, I discovered that near after uh, Ruaka, there's a place called Gidongoro, I discovered that that is another parking lot. <laughs> Vehicles were not moving. But I thank God for the opportunity to be here. Praise the Lord. Don't ask us where we left our vehicles. We left them somewhere on the highway, took our border border to make sure we are here before the service is over. So the Lord is taking care. If the gospel has to be preached, it must be preached, whatever the price. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I read the text that I want us to share from, I just want to say thank you, Bishop, for the invitation. I don't take it for granted for the opportunity to come and share the pulpit with you and your team and this wonderful church. Praise the Lord. It's one of those beautiful churches. We pass by, sometimes you come in, you hide, sit in the background. Nobody knows you. You sit in the background. You get blessed, then you disappear. But today, the privilege that you've given me, thank you so much for just being able to come in here and be part of the ministering team. May God bless you so much as the Lord uses me to bless your people. Now, if you have a Bible, and I believe you do, please turn with me to Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. Now, I wanted to read from verse 23 going down, but I thought maybe it would be nice to introduce the beginning so that we actually can get to understand why it is important to get the whole text. So I will read from verse 1 a bit as I pick up uh, the pieces so that when I get to where I want us to concentrate on, I will be able to zero in on my topic for today. So verse 1 says this, one day Samson went down to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night saying, at dawn we will kill him. But Samson lay there until the middle of the night then he got up, took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Some time later, this is the life of Samson, some time later, he fell in love with the woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so that we may tie him up and subdue him. 
Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Verse 6 says, So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Now, I want us to stop there and go all the way to verse 20. 23. Now, the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were high in their spirit, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. And when they stood him among, when they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, O oh, sovereign Lord, remember me, O oh God. Please strengthen me just one more time time and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left on the other. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. And thus, he killed many more when he died than while he was alive. This is the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the story of Samson is a story we are familiar with. We've heard it a thousand and ten times. Maybe even dramatized it when you were in Sunday school. You're familiar with the story. It's a story you can repeat over and over again. The problem is this is that the Samson's life is exactly the testimony many of us have. It's a life many of us live. The Bible says he left where he was, Jerusalem, where he lived. The place of the presence of God went down to Timnah. Now, the first mistake Samson made, brothers and sisters, he left the higher ground, holy ground, where the Lord himself dwelleth, and came down where human beings, you and I, the mortals who are governed by the flesh. Now, remember what he did first was a prostitute. The second one, a woman, a beautiful one. Now, I have nothing wrong with the woman being beautiful. I'm married to a beautiful, lovely girl. Hello. I mean, she's so beautiful when you see her, you will notice. Tell your neighbor, you will have but to notice. And the reason is, I did. If I did, you could. And I was saved, Holy Ghost, feel sanctified, going to heaven, but I noticed her. One as if he were. And I told the Lord, I have been praying, because I'd, I'd given God a timeline. And I told him, because this was how my life was. I told God I want to get married at the age of 25. At 25, I was in college. I trained at Utali. I said, I'll get married at 28. At 28, I was back in college. I told God, okay, let's do this. I'm going to follow the steps of Jesus. I must get married at the age of 30. Because Jesus started ministry at 30, I'm giving my life to someone at 30. Now, I got a beautiful, lovely girl that the Lord, I would been in ministry together. She was a Ugandan. I was a Kenyan. We used to go to Uganda for mission, and that was part of the mission, I think. But then what happened, brothers and sisters? My birthday is 3rd of March. We broke up on 14th of February. Now, I'm sure some people know what happens on 14th of February. Now, the ladies remember, men, we can help you. You know, men don't remember these things. It's Valentine's Day. So we broke up. So I turned 30, single, and I told God, I am done looking. I'm done searching. If you want me to get married, you bring. I will not look. I will not search. I'll be fine. If anybody asks me why I'm single, I tell, ask God. That's his business. Adam did not ask God for a wife. The Lord saw it was not good for Adam to be 
So God, if he thinks I, it's okay with me being single, he'll bring someone. Hello? Well, until she showed up. And the Lord told me, you asked me to bring, and the one standing next to you, I brought, and she's been here for three years. <laughs> Cut the long story short, I got married to a beautiful, lovely girl called Nelly Mugure. She comes from Gashie, so right now, because I'm in Limuru, I'm in her neighborhood. So I hang out with guys in Gashie. Uh, don't remember the bad ones, remember the good ones. You know, Wakina, Washosho, and Unugu, those are my relatives, but... Um, <laughs> In Timna, you find all sorts of people. Samson found one. The problem was that Delilah, the girl he found, was not from the mountainside where holiness and righteousness dwelt. She was the one on the downside where everything goes. Some of us are down that side of town. Where your life is controlled by everything everybody else says. Someone told me this, that the life we are in, we are on a journey, brothers and sisters. You must choose the guys coming along with you. Because on the highway of life, either you are walking with God like Enoch did, or the devil is your partner like he's done to so many others, or you might just discover. Remember that when Jesus was going up the mountain to be crucified, he wasn't the only one carrying the cross. Hello? There are two other jamas. Some of us, I don't know which cross you've seen, brothers and sisters, but on the Calvary tree, there were three crosses. <laughs> Hallelujah. There were three crosses. Some of us have been concentrating on the one of the thief who never repented. That is why you tell us you are saved, Holy Ghost, filled, sanctified, going to heaven, and you see everything wrong in everybody else. There's nobody good enough for you. When they stand, oh, my sister, you're looking nice. Like any of those shoes don't look good on you. I mean, my brother, you look so nice, but you didn't comb your hair. I mean, there's always a comment about everything you see and do. You've never seen anything good. Or, you could be hanging on to the cross of the thief who never repented. But maybe some of us are hanging out with the one who repented. The one who said, oh, my sister, I'm so sorry. I, I, I love you, and you know I do, but sometimes I just make mistakes. You know, I, I serve in the Anglican Church, and we have our, our archbishops and bishops, and my immediate, uh, the immediate, immediate, he calls himself the, the grand arch, retired archbishop, that is Benjamin Zimbi. He was telling us when he was bishop in Kitui, he had a problem one day with his clergy. One clergy was caught in the act, you know what that means? I'm using the biblical language so that you don't accuse me of being, uh, misusing words. He was caught in the act. And the message came to the bishop, and the bishop brought him before a, a tribunal, and they were to discipline him, and said, Baba, I know I made a mistake, but I want you to pray for me. I've got a problem. I my belt. I need you to pray for me, so that it goes down below the belt. Because that's where the problem is. Samson was in that problem. He needed prayers to go down below the belt. Hallelujah. Do you know anybody who knows someone who knows someone who needs that prayer? <laughs> Haven't you noticed what our young people have been doing? Watch if he kwanini wazazi. You remember when that story started? Right now it is all over. Two days ago I was on Citizen. We were discussing the same story. And we were just, because they called me and said, John Mark, can you come and talk to the nation on, during uh, JK Lion? The truth is this, it's getting worse, brothers and sisters. You see, some people thought it was only in Nairobi. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't only in Nairobi. Yesterday, they were talking about Webuye. And they were talking about uh, Samburu. 21 in Samburu. About 14 in Webuye. Now, my daughter, I have a daughter who is 15 years old. <laughs> She's the youngest. I have two. One 18, one 16. So that after I finished the show, I asked her, by the way, uh, would you have gone to that party? He said, Dad, let me tell you. My friends were in another one. He said, what? He said, yeah. There was another one. Three weeks ago, it was called Nairobi Teen Fez. What is Nairobi, teen? Nairobi Teens Festival? He said, okay. What was it all about? He said, well, it was in Kitengela. Now, the boys were paying 500 bob. The girls were coming free, you know? To my fair. 
The most painful thing was this. There were over 100 children. They spent there the whole Saturday. Unfortunately, one boy died. Of course, that did not reach the press. You see, part of my job as the director of missions for the Anglican Church is we gather information to feed our archbishop because, so that when you see him on TV, there's enough data. We have all the facts that are necessary. So some of those information we get. So I looked at my daughter and I said, you knew that, but you never told me. He said, uh, we didn't talk about it. <laughs> Then I asked her, why didn't you go? She said, Dad, I have better things to do than to go to a party. I said, uh, okay, let's be honest. Better things to do? He said, I love our home and I love where I stay. And I know you would not approve. Then I said, you don't go because Daddy didn't approve. You don't go because it's the wrong thing. Hello? Because that's part of the mistakes we've made, brothers and sisters. That we don't sin because someone else does not approve. And that's part of the mistake we make when we're teaching our children in Sunday school. That you must obey the law because you must obey the Ten Commandments. You must obey everything because God will get angry with you. No, that's a wrong teaching. Because if all Kenyans obeyed the Ten Commandments, if Samson did what was right, do you think God would be in heaven and say, Whoo, Samson must have, I'm happy today Samson obeyed. I'm happy today in Jerry is obeying the Ten No. God is permanently happy and eternally happy angry against sin. Guess who will be smiling when all Kenyans, you can walk from here to Kangemi without being marked. Do you think God will be like, hey, do we walk back? No, it is you who will be smiling. So we must teach our young people the right thing, that you must do the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Because I grew up in the days when you'd tell someone, you do it because your father said so. Yes, I would do because my mother said so. Today you tell your child because your dad said so, he said, dad, I disagree. And you can debate in the house. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Samson must have negotiated his arrangement with Delilah. Because the second point is this, brothers and sisters. Not all those beautiful things are from God. Therefore, don't tell me you're going to claim and declare. Simply because it looks good. No, that might not be good for your health. Not all that glitters is gold. Hello? Tell your neighbor you might be as pretty as you could be. God could have made you in the morning when he was still fresh with good ideas, but that does not necessarily make you good enough for me. Jesus is the best enough for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Because some people tell me, I see some people walking like God. God must be proud I am a born and alive and well. No, pride comes before a fall, so be careful. It's good to look smart. It's good to look fine. But guess what? They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Praise the Lord. You might be looking so fine. That is until the next one shows up. But there is one that worked on me. Fearfully, wonderfully worked on me. Trust you me, brothers. I'm the only original me. Anything else is a photocopy. So, and I am already taken. So God is not making another John Mark. No, there's, I'm already done. So when my time is up, when I go, there will be no another John Marco Duor living called to do this ministry at this time. No, there's only one me. I could have had a twin, but I did not. And even if you are a twin or a triplet or a quadruplet or all the lets that could be there, trust you me, we are all different. Praise the Lord. Not all that glitters is gold. And so we need to ask ourselves, why do we push? Simply because it looks good. It feels good. It behaves good. It pretends to be good. I think this is what is meant for me. No, not all that is good and looking good and seems nice is good enough for me. Someone said good is the worst enemy of the best. God is not offering you a good life. He's offering you the best life. So don't settle for just a good life. Don't just settle for a good. I know. Let me tell you, I took long before I got married. I got married 20 years ago. But I took long before I got married. Oh, I told you, by, when I turned 30, I was single. So I got married at 32. So you can calculate how old I am. I'm 52. Praise the Lord. Why are you surprised? I'm, I'm supposed to be looking older than this. Are you the one working on me? God is. <laughs> and he's doing a good job. Praise the Lord. Some of my friends tell me, John Mark, you're looking young. I said, by the way, if you want to get old, the highway is big. You go on a Lamborghini, I'm coming on a tuk-tuk. Praise the Lord. He's fearfully working on me. So listen, friends. Listen. 
Some people tell me that, you know, John Mark, why did it take longer? It's because I feared the person I would marry. Because I wanted to submit to the Lord 110%, but I fear he might tell me, thus says the Lord, marry thee this. Behold thine wife. And there's a lady I look at and is like, God, on a serious note. <laughs> I haven't noticed. So the ones I thought I knew, when finally I told him, you go bring, when she showed up, I noticed. And guess what? Like Adam on that day, flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. I'm sure the guy became so poetic and dramatic. And then he said, wow, man. But because English does not use W-O-W-M-A-N, they removed the second W. So we settled out for a woman. But otherwise it was, wow, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you cannot wow when you see her, you might be settling for a Delilah. Praise the Lord. Number three, brothers and sisters, is this. The woman convinces the good man of God. Tell me the secret to your, uh, your, your, your strength. Please just let us know what it is we must do. And the man treated him badly three times. She was consistent, persistent. Someone says that persistence wears out resistance. So for a while, Samson said no. Okay, cheated a while, cheated a twice. But listen, brothers and sisters, if you are cheating and playing with the devil, you can't beat him. That is his mother tongue. <laughs> Hello. The Bible says that is his language. So you, you are trying to cheat the devil. You know, the guy, someone said there are three people you can't cheat. You can't cheat the devil, you can't cheat God, and of course you can't cheat yourself. So Samson is like, uh, if you do this, you'll get me. Tried, it didn't work. Mm, okay. Samson, I thought you loved me. And I know that statement. All of us who are married, let me see all the married men in the house. If you're not sure, you can just lift your hand so we will help you. Because the lady who is married to you will be like, wait, wait. You know that look that tells you, I'll kill you after we finish the service in the name of the Lord. Yes, that look, yes. Now, brothers and sisters, those of us who are married, you know when that question comes, sweetie, uh, do you still love me? And it's like, where did that come from? There's a whole long story coming with it. Did you realize yesterday was my birthday? Like, what? Yesterday. <clears throat> actually, and then you become the smart guy. I was actually thinking something more dramatic. You know, yesterday was a working day. I have something in store for the weekend. God, you too. That time you are blank, empty headed, hoping. Brethren, I know. Don't you ever try to get out of some of those things. And let me tell you, when I got married, I had to learn. I work with the diary every day of my life. My wife's birthday is on 29th of July. Let me tell you, my friends. I would get a new diary in December and I write 29th from January. 29th January, remember July 29th. February, whether it's a leap year, remember July. I would write 29th until June. Then June, I know every page of my diary is a seven days. I would write there, prepare for the gifts. <laughs> At the week of the 29th, on Monday, I know I've been thinking about it. On that day, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, you thought I forgot. <laughs> I would never have forgotten. If I can diarize a meeting with someone else, this one, my friend, I will be reminded of my life. I would rather not forget. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Delilah convinced Samson to reveal the secret, the secret, the very fountain of his strength, something that he was created to have. The Bible says that he was a Nazarite. His hair was never supposed to be cut. That was the secret. Now, some of us, we have lost the secret of our existence, the scripture itself. We can't remember the last time we prayed. Some of us read the Bible when you have just before. Let me tell you, Christians, we are an amazing kind of people. We are the kind of guys who read the Bible just before you sleep. Either because you are tired and bored and that makes you to sleep fast, or you have too many nightmares, you put the Bible under the pillow. The Bible is not a magic charm. The Bible says, meditate on it. You can't meditate when you say, Lord, I'll thank you. Lord, I'll thank you. And you wake up in the morning, it's like, by the way, amen. God, where did I stop? Where did I stop? Some of us remember to say amen in the morning. 
Not just like someone said a joke. That some of you Christians, you need exercise. The Bible says physical exercise profited a little, but spiritual exercise profits more. I love doing exercise. I keep fit. That is fine. The problem is some of you do one sit-up a day. <laughs> one sit-up a day. In the morning, you wake up. In the evening, you go back and sleep. And you think you are doing exercise. And you're wondering why the body is not responding <laughs> to certain stimuli. Buana sifiwe. Samson lost the essence of his existence. He missed it by revealing to a heathen, a pagan, a woman that has been set up to destroy him. Some of us are missing on that. The very foundation of our faith. Praise the Lord. But then that wasn't the painful part. Because the next point, brothers and sisters, is this. When they caught Samson, they removed his eyes. Now, the eyes were literal, physical eyes. But let me explain what those eyes meant. Is that Samson lost his vision. Samson lost his purpose. Samson lost his destiny. Samson lost what he was created to do. He could no longer see his destiny. He could no longer see his purpose. He could no longer see where God wanted him to go. He could no longer lead himself to places. Like previously with the, when he was in the prison, he carried the gate. Now, let me tell you, brethren, that gate was not Amlango like this one of this church. You know, some of you, if I ask some people, Bishop, if I tell your people to come and beba this, they say, uh, Wandugu kujeni. Kujeni, kujeni. Tungawa ye mlango. That one is the one of the church. Now the gate, you need a youth project to lift it. Now Samson was a unique person. I love the guy, brothers and sisters. The energy he had and the strength. You see, when he killed 1,000 Philistines with the, 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 the jawbone of a donkey, <laughs> It wasn't a Chinese movie. I'm sure some of you know the Chinese movie where guys, you, go, you hit a guy like this, the guy dies. You hit a guy like this, the guy dies. No, those were warriors, hardcore warriors. Each person would come in and Samson looks at them and kongong, proper, dead. Chini, who is the next one? And he's like, yeah, even me, even me. And as they kept on coming, 1,000, it was not a cartoon program. It was a real life. Please don't try that at home. Some of you have seen some movies where someone holds a t-shirt like this and tears it like this and all the buttons disappear. Don't try that at home. It doesn't work. Samson killed a thousand people with the jawbone of a donkey. The guy lifted up a whole gate and carried it home. Unfortunately, in the smile... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I don't know what has tingled some things here and is well I wanted to. Thank you. Thank you. Samson lost his eyes. Samson lost his gift. Samson lost his destiny. And when he did that, he gave the enemy the next point, an opportunity to celebrate over the death of a great hero of faith. Some of us here, brothers and sisters, you might be walking, you might be coming in and you're in the praise team, you might be a preacher, maybe a minister in one of the services, but deep inside you're dead. Deep inside, the devil took you for a long time. The devil has you under his control. The Bible says they celebrated. The verse that I started reading from verse 23, going on. They started celebrating. Our God, Dagon, has actually done what? Has given us victory over our enemy. He increased our slain. We have him under our control. You know, sometimes some of us brothers and sisters, you might be a preacher like I am. Someone said you can preach until tomorrow morning, but that's not an entry into heaven. The blood of Christ Jesus must cleanse you too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how good you might think. You might be a worship leader. You might be a preacher. You are in the choir. You might be an usher. You are the person who counts the offertory. You might even be born in the bishop's house. In the compound of the church. 
You know, Kenyans, we are not as dramatic like Nigerians, let me tell you. Nigerians, every year they have a conference. I know one of the great pastors have a conference. The conference takes a month has over one million people in attendance. Oh, there are ladies who go and give birth in the conference because that child must be holy. So you give birth in the conference. There are hospitals and schools and everything. So some, it takes a month. So you come with the children and they go to school as part of the training. So that's why you'll hear someone is called Blessed Holiness. And you're wondering, okay, is that your name or that's who God has made you? Say, no, it's my name. He said, and if you are not saved... You, blessed holiness will have arrived in hell on time. Samson, the man after God's own heart, lost his vision, lost his sight, but gave the enemy an opportunity to celebrate. I don't know what the devil sees or, 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 or does when he sees you. Tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor, what does the devil do when he sees you? Because if you do not know what he does, brothers and sisters, there is a problem. We need to be the kind of people when he sees you talking to someone, he begins to get worried that that person might get saved. Hello? You know, because the problem is some of you sit on the fence and the fence is so bad enough because most people don't understand if there is a fence here, this side is heaven and that side is hell. If there is a fence here, who is most likely to have put the fence? God or the devil? Someone tell me. Of course, who fears their people might slide on the other side? The devil fears his people because God has given you a choice. He says, if you're at this side, stay. But if you go and sit on the fence, it's the enemy who will. I don't want people crossing over to God's side and now we can fence. So guess who, where you're sitting? On whose side? One as if you were. Samson sat on the fence too long, he flipped. But the good news is this. You might be telling me, John Mark, are you just coming to tell us how bad things were? No. No. He was locked up in prison. They would call him to entertain them, and that was looking fine. That was looking great. For the, the Philistines, that was awesome. Bring Samson to entertain us. I'm trying to imagine what kind of singing. If he was a, he was a Zairean, he would be doing a Dombolo kind of dance. Maybe he was doing break dance. Some of you who know what I'm talking about. The younger generation, I don't know what they dance these other days, you know. Like, now you know my age. I don't do some of the things I used to do. I can sing that good old chorus we sang. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Some things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. You see, but there are some of us that you got saved, Holy Ghost, feel sanctified. But if someone asks you, have, there are things you've stopped doing. said, um, we are still on planet Earth. I will stop when we get to heaven. Now, who told you you are going? Hello? One gospel singer said, Keith Green said, that if your wife hasn't seen the transformation in your life, if your children have not seen the transformation in your life, if colleagues at work have not seen the transformation in your life, then maybe you never got transformed. So you could have had a chill on one day the bishop preached. You can get the chill when you have a cold. Have you ever felt like that when you have a homer? Yes. And you thought it was the Holy Spirit? No. One as if he were. Samson in prison being called to entertain. The Bible says, but then Samson's hair grew. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, in the darkness of our lives, like in this period of isolation when corona is a threat to the world, God is not asleep. Hallelujah. He has not retired. He hasn't quit his job. He has not given up on his people. He calls Samson to be a Nazarite. He is not going to let his servant go down the drain. Oh, I tell ladies this. Ladies, mothers who are here, if you're a mother, you know you, are a child. you have a child. You are own. You, are own. You, 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 you had a labor pain. I know what I'm talking about. Just lift your hand. Because I got a message for you. Let me tell you something, friends. When I got married to this lovely girl, I'm telling you, I promise that I will be in the delivery room when all our children are born. Yes, I did. Now, when our firstborn was being born, we were staying in Limuru. The kid had been enjoying the, the stomach for too long. It was 11 days after DD. <laughs> so we said, let's go. We went to Agakan, put her in, waited. She was induced. The whole night, nothing happened. So at 6 o'clock, I rushed back to Limuru, just take a shower, freshen up to come back. 
When I reached somewhere called Denderu, I get a phone call. The baby is coming. Remember, I had made a promise. I will be in the delivery room. I took exactly seven minutes. In those days, the jam wasn't as bad as this. But immediately I got in. I don't think I even locked the car. My car in those days, by the way, you couldn't even steal it. You couldn't, you couldn't drive it. It was an Alfa Romeo, a red one. I parked it there, got into the, <laughs> got into the hospital, in the lift with our pediatrician as we were going up. He's going to do the delivery. I couldn't recognize him because both of us had the same assignment. Get in there before the baby shows up. When we got in, I held her hand and I said, we can do this. I'd gone through the, we called them Lama's class. When finally the baby came out, both of us were crying. Man, she is crying. Ladies, you know the pain, right? I was crying too. And the simple reason, the difference between her tears and mine was that I was holding her hand. She was breaking my fingers when the baby was coming. As she broke my fingers, I, when the baby came, I said, yes, we've done it, sweetie. We've done it. We've done it. Up to today, I tell my kids, don't mess. I know what it means to deliver. I was present. My fingers almost broke. Now, ladies, this is what I was coming to. Nobody knows that pain more than you do. So don't let the devil take that kid from you. Please don't tell me, well, yeah, imagine my child is hooked up on drugs, my child is a mongiki, my child is Jeshi Lamze, whatever it is. No, never again. That team was not in the delivery room, my sister. That team were not there during the labor pains. The devil was not in that room when you saw the baby. Tell the devil, get out of my house. You don't have the last laugh. I have this child God gave me. I prayed, my friend. I prayed. I pray. Now, if you didn't pray, maybe it's okay with you. If you didn't pray, it's okay with you. But if you prayed and you know what that pain is, some moments you need to get up. Stop kneeling. Get up and walk and tell the devil, listen, you mess with my kid, I, I'm, I'm going to come after you with a vengeance. Tell him like David told Goliath, you coming with me to against me with a spear and a sword, I'm coming against you in the name of the God of Israel. The devil, you can't mess up with my kids. Some of you maybe took longer like I did to get a wife or a husband. You prayed until your friends laughed at you. Like the Philistines laughed at, 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 at Samson. They laughed at you, you'll never get a husband. You'll never have children. And then the Lord showed up. When the Lord showed up right now, they look at you and it's like, imagine Atayeye, Alipata, the first child when she was 42. <laughs> Tell them you have no idea how I prayed. This child was a spiritual project. Engineered. For, God took 42 years to prepare this child. I mean, you were made in one day, brother. Mine took 42 years. <laughs> and then the devil wants to mess with that? No, you're messing with me. You're playing with the wrong guy. Praise the Lord. Because when we let the devil hang around and make us feel woye imagine, woye imagine, for how long will you woye imagine God? The Bible tells us Samson's hair grew. And where was it growing? In prison. Where he was locked up. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many times you felt like you've been in prison. I don't care how many times they've laughed at you because of the way you walk. You know, I, I had this small little girl who was growing up in All Saints Cathedral. Every time people would laugh at her, she was called Anne. Anne was so short. I mean, she would reach me somewhere here. So I would look at her and I'd say, Anne, why do you feel... I said, Percy, you know what? People laugh at me because I'm short. Tell them. Next time they laugh at you, tell them, excuse me, we are not competitors. Because you can't catch up with me, but I can catch up with you. <laughs> so while you are in front, keep running. And I'm not looking, okay? Yes. Some of you, someone will say, oh, God, you've got big ears. God knew you needed to hear everything. That's why he gave you the ears. So don't you ever tell me that my ears are too large. That your nose is too big. He knows my lungs need all the air. We are not sharing. Praise the Lord. So don't you ever tell me that we well, imagine. Don't imagine me. Hello? God didn't consult you when he was making me. No. And by the way, your opinion is personally yours. You can keep it. If you didn't even ask Adam what kind of a human being you'd make for a wife, and you, hello? And he's been doing that for a long time. 
When Samson's hair grew, brother and sisters, he recognized, I lost my sight. I may have lost my sight, but I haven't lost my God. Hallelujah. I may have lost my sight, but his presence, I can feel it. I can feel it. In the quietness of my prison cell, in the quietness, brothers and sisters, when things get thick in your marriage, sometimes you've been married to this guy for 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and you discover now he's hanging around a lot with 21-year-olds. Get to the quietness of the room. Lock the windows. Close the door. And tell him, God, I prayed for this man. He was my prayer project. I'm not going to let a 21-year-old walk around with him. Hello? I've prayed. <laughs> don't tell me. I don't answer prayers. I can pray with you, but I don't answer prayers. I don't, I'm not at the head office where prayers are manufactured. Nope. Get into the closet. Jesus said, call it closet. Get down on your knees. If you want cushions, pull them around. If you want a chair, you know, I have those good three-legged chairs. You know, sit there and tell him, can we talk, Dad? I got a problem, and this problem started when you first loved me. I told you I needed a wife, and you gave me, right? Now, there's someone spending more time with her than me. Can we talk? I prayed for a child. You gave me a son. And I named him after my father. Dad, I see the hair with all those dreadlocks and the colors he's wearing. I think he's turned gay. You don't make mistakes. You can sort this out. If you could raise the dead, Jehovah. If you could call Lazarus out of the tomb. If you could turn water into wine. If you could walk on the water, if you could split the Red Sea, you want to tell me you can't fix my son? Hello? Samson told God, just this one more time. I know I messed up, Lord. The consequences, the mistakes I made. I fell in love with the wrong woman. I hung out with the wrong people. I'm sorry, Lord, but you called me for something. To be judge over Israel, Lord. You called me to discipline the Philistines so that they never harass your people. You called me to be a judge, to lead your people into your presence. I am sorry, Lord, I made a mistake. I revealed the secret of my power to a heathen, to the devil himself. Just this one more time, Dad. Avenge my eyes. Give me back my vision and my destiny. Give me back that which was, I was created to do. Brothers and sisters, until you know what you were created to do, trust you me, you will be loitering around. You will be going, behaving like a pendulum. Just like this. Hoping someone will accept you. Hoping someone will appreciate you. Hoping your life is based on other people's public opinion. Do they like my hair? Do they like, you know, my dress, my choice? Really? Yes, and the way you walk, that I think, I think people will like me when I wear this suit. Ah, no, it's not bright enough. I'm too dark, let me put on something bright. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you are depending your life on public opinion, this is what Jesus said. Once you get it, you missed the reward. Because today, Watakwambia and Dugu, you are looking smart. Tomorrow, you put on the same, it's like, you only have one suit. Watasema wafanye nini wachoke. But there is one man whose approval I'm looking for. Tell your neighbor when he says, good and faithful servant, I am done. When he prayed, he said, put me on the pillars, boy. Just put me on the pillars. He said, what dance is this, Samson? He said, don't worry, you'll discover. Put me on the pillars. He said, but you are supposed to be entertaining us. He said, don't worry, just put my fingers on the pillars. He said, but Samson, I thought you were supposed to be going around. No, just put me on the pillars. Let them smile. They think of a new dance. Yes, there is a new dance coming. And guess who will be dancing? Not me. They will be running around to try and get our. The Bible says 3,000 rulers of Philistines. That was a major. In Kenya, when we have an event, we have never had 3,000 presidents come to Kenya. <laughs> 3,000 rulers of Philistines were in the house. And then he said, Lord, just one more time. Just one more time. I know I messed up, but I'm not making a mistake again. Hold my hand, Lord. And bring the Philistines down. The Bible says he pushed the things with all his might. All the pillars came down and 3,000 people died. The Bible says he killed more people at his death. He did not see them die. 
that tells you something, friends. The assignment was, not, it was bigger than Samson. Some of the people that will be blessed in your life, you will never even know. You will never see them. The other day I met someone who told me, you touched my life. I was in the same school with my brother here, so, uh, KK. I know they know you, so I can't tell you to stand. <clears throat> we were together in the same school. Back in 1987, we'd gone to preach. We were young preachers. We are students, but preachers. We'd gone to preach in a school, a girl's school. When we finished, two ladies walked over to me and told me, uh, one said, I mean, I'm saved, but my friend is not saved, and she hates Jesus, she hates salvation, she hates Christianity. She basically hates a lot of things about God. I said, really? I said, please talk to her. <laughs> and then I started talking to her. I said, okay, by the way, I was tired. I just finished preaching. I said, you know, salvation is like a gift you're given. I put my hand in my pocket. I had a brand new handkerchief, which I had. I said, take this handkerchief. And she took it and said, you know, salvation is like that. You can take it or, re or, re or refuse it. But when you take it, you have an option. You can put it in your pocket and use it, or you can put it, lock it up somewhere. And she looked at me and said, you know, what God has given us is for free. You can receive it or choose not to. I didn't say much, but I left. To cut the long story short, I never saw her back from 1987 until early this year. I did not see her, but on Facebook, someone tags me and says, are you John Mark? I said, of course, yeah, my name on Facebook is John Mark. I said, yeah, are you the John Mark who was in Kisi some years back, da, 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 1987? I said, yes, I was in Kisi. I said, can you remember preaching in a school like this? I said, um, I can't remember details, but then uh, there were two girls who came and saw you and talked with you, and she went describing the whole of this scenario. I said, by the way, uh, a month after that, I gave my life to Christ Jesus. Now, the story is not that that's what the, st the thing is. The handkerchief is still with me up to today, so you can counted the number of years since 87. But this is what happened, my sisters and brothers, that after she got saved, she went for A-levels in somewhere in Western, then came to um, KU, did her degree, then met her husband in KU, who was a saved guy. They got married. After getting married, after working as teachers for about seven years, they decided they were feeling God calling them into ministry. This is how interesting the story was. Oh, remember, by the way, she led her husband to Christ with the same handkerchief. Now, this is what happened. <clears throat> This is what happened. One day she, tells, she decides and tells her husband, I want to talk to you about something. You know, men, when you're told, can we talk? You know there's a problem. So he said, okay, what do you want to talk about? He said, let's talk tomorrow. So he's like, you're postponing, let's talk now. He said, no, we do it tomorrow when we are not in a hurry. He said, sour. So the following day, he tells her, uh, the, the lady says, can we sit down and talk? Prepared a nice meal and said, uh, Siti, uh, there's something I've really been struggling with for a long time. He said, what is it? That um, the last three years, the Lord has been speaking to my heart. He said, okay. And, and um, I, I'm feeling called to go to a Bible school. He said, okay. Yes. And I was just thinking, I've been praying and asking God. I don't know whether you'll agree. We have new, I mean, young kids. Uh, I don't know. But what do you think? And the husband started laughing and laughed, laughed, laughed. He said, okay. What have you done? He said, um, I have sent um, a letter and I've been admitted to a uh, Next, but it was next then. He said, okay, that's interesting. Then he said, um, I've been wanting to tell you something. I've been struggling for the last three years also about this issue. He said, what? I actually applied to next and I was admitted and I paid the admission fee. <laughs> and he said, when were you going to tell me? Is that when you bring it up? To cut the long story short, they went to Negest. After they went to Negest, they went back home. They stayed in Rosinga Island. Oh, the handkerchief is still intact. The Lord called them to start up an orphanage. In the last 14 years, they have raised approximately 7,000 children. And every time they talk to these children, every child that is adopted, dropped, or the police just take the children, drop them there every time they find a lost child. And they're taken to that place. Some have gotten married. Some have got children. I mean, there are over 7,000. Right now, she has over 700 in the home and the school. Then when she met me, she says, I want you to come and meet your grandchildren because all of them know John Mark. Then I said, do you know how much the handkerchief costed me? It was five bob. Everybody who walks into her office lives knowing the story of the handkerchief. I never knew that from 1987 until last year. Some of the people that you will bless, brothers and sisters, you don't need to know them by name. All you do is say, Lord, here I am, use me. Praise the Lord. That is why we are saying, Lord, this one more time, revive me, restore me, because I have been in the closet for too long. I have been in pain and cry for too long, just this one more time. 
And I thank God for this revival week. I thank God for this moment because it is a moment you can tell the Lord. Please, do not pass me by. Let's all rise up.